this is someone we talked about before. And that's Jamal Williams from the Detroit Lions. Now, you might say, well, why are you talking about him again? I thought you only cover free agents once, you know, they are talked about and players that the Bengals could target. Well, that's because the only time we talk about someone twice is when there's news around that said person. Cincinnati is reportedly very interested in Jamal Williams. So, when I first reported Jamal Williams possible Cincinnati, it was a... Kind of, you know, okay, well, he might go there. There's a chance, you know, anything could happen. And, you know, he was being connected there because the Bengals are in a market for, for a running back with possibly losing Joe Mixon and Samaj P. Ryan. So they were like, okay, well, if they're going to lose both these options, we got to start looking at running backs to connect to the Bengals. And you know how the media works. They kind of connect any player possible. I mean, if, you're, if your title in free agency is running back... And you are a free agent, you will be automatically talked about for any team that needs a running back, right? Reason why I talked about them, uh, talked about Jamal Williams mainly was because I saw it was a good fit, but at the same time, as I said in my video, I just don't think it would work out. I think that the Bengals right now do move on from Joe Mix, and if they do move on from Samaj P. Ryan, they need someone who's going to be a little bit of everything, right? They need what I would call a Weapon X in the backfield. This can't just be a, okay, well, this guy might be okay. And another thing is they can't pay an arm and a leg to get this said player. Because if I'm being honest, I'd rather spend all the money elsewhere. Running back's the last position I would care about if I'm the Bengals right now. There are so many good running backs in this draft. We talked about Tank, fourth round pick. We talked about Muhammad, who's a 7th round pick, who could become a starting running back for Cincinnati Bengals and be a very solid player. Me, personally, I think they bring back Saman J.P. Ryan. I think they let Mixon go and they bring back Saman J.P. Ryan. And they also have Chris Evans, who could also blossom into something special. So this is the last position I'm actually interested in. But there's some more talk and chatter and some more reports that the Bengals are interested, very interested, in Jamal Williams. And Jamal Williams last season was the product of a really interesting system. The guy got all the goal line carries. And that's why he was, right here, as you can see, finished first with 17 touchdowns on the season. Which, by far, was the most. And you might say, well, he sounds really good. His yards per carry was 4.1 yards, guys. He was tied for 41st. He had the worst numbers of like any running back in the NFL. And also the most touchdowns. He was a product of DeAndre Swift being the starting running back and him being the goal line back. This is why Gus Bus, in three years, Gus Bus has 15 touchdowns. And you might say, well, uh, that's nothing. This guy did it one season. Keep in mind, though, the Ravens have like 17 running backs. But there's a reason why. Because he got he gets all the goal line carries, right? That's just how it works. So, Jamal, take all this aside. He had 1,000 rushing yards. That was really good. 272, which is the 7th most attempts in the NFL. And he had 17 rushing touchdowns. This guy can't catch the ball. He can't catch a cold, let alone catch the football. So this is just absolutely a waste for the Bengals to even target a pick up because of his price tag. Now, if you're telling me, you know, Jamal Williams at a price tag of two or three million dollars and that's it, I would say, oh, absolutely. I don't mind picking him up and seeing what you have in him. Maybe he ends up, you know, blossoming into something special. I'm fine with that. But the end of the day is, after what he did last season, and his age being only, um, yeah, how old is he? I think he, is he going to tell me on this thing or no? It's not going to tell me. Um, he was drafted, so what is that? 25-26? Yeah, 25-26. Because, wait, let me just double check that, because I know he was with the Packers for a little bit. Um... 
And we'll make sure I got his age correctly. Cause I, I remember I talked about his age in the first video. He's 27 years old. He's going to be 28 going into this season. That's usually when running backs start falling off. Is Once they get around 30, they start falling off. It's just, for the price tag he's going to cost, he's going to cost $10 million plus. He'll cost more than Joe Mixon. And if you ask me right now who I'd rather have, Joe Mixon or Jamal Williams, it's 1,000% Joe Mixon. I don't even think Joe Mixon is the greatest, and I think that you guys do. I do believe you guys need to move on from Joe Mixon. I agree with that narrative. But to say you move on from Joe Mixon to go for Jamal Williams is absolutely idiotic. I think, honestly, I think all with all things being considered, if Jamal Williams wasn't goal line back, I think Joe Mixon, I think Jamal Williams is a poor man's Joe Mixon. So, I again, like I said, I have to make this video because there was a chance, when I talked about it the first time, there was like a 10% chance the Bengals will sign, you know, Jamal Williams. At this moment in time, based on what I understand, based on what I've heard, what I've seen, it's like a 40 or 50% chance they sign Joe Mixon. And I think, personally speaking, that would be a really bad decision by the Bengals. Just my personal opinion, obviously, but I would not want to see that the Bengals do this. I think this would be a waste of money. Especially with the price tag he would cost. I'd rather you take that money, invest into a lineman, invest into a tackle, or invest into a corner, invest in a, a you know position, or I don't know, maybe give that money to Jermaine Pratt. Give that money to uh to Flowers. Give that money to somebody else who honestly one of these free agents who you want to bring back. Right? So at this moment in time, like I said before, nothing is set in stone. But with the 14th coming closer and closer, we're going to start seeing a lot of these talks, man. And I'm telling you right now, boys, on the 14th, which is the first day of free agency, your boy is going to be active. So if you make sure you hit that subscribe button because you're going to see like probably 45 Bengals videos on the 14th, okay? Tell you right now, you're not going to want to miss the channel on the 14th. We're going to be talking about every living thing the Bengals do. And, like, if the Bengals sign one player and then sign another player 10 minutes later after one video, there's going to be another video out within seconds on that video. Because we are we are going to be covering everything Bengals for the um, for the free agency. Because this, obviously, is the most important time of the year. And, obviously, we have the draft, too. We'll be live streaming the draft when the draft does happen. But I'm going to tell you right now, personally speaking, this would be a stupid move by the Bengals. And the Bengals don't make stupid moves. So, I'm going to go with no, Chief. A 39.7 receiving. You can't get worse than that. Last time Pro Football Focus ranked me, they gave me a negative 5. You want some perspective on the ranking system. I was a negative 5 receiving. So, he's better than me. Peace out, guys.